So it works well at Fiorano, but the GTO could be at a slight disadvantage compared to previous Ferrari supercars. Because this is slightly uncharted territory for Ferrari, normally when it charges mega, mega bucks for a car, we get something that high that looks completely different to anything else in the range. And this is quite obviously a 599. So the GTO needs to do a little bit more to justify the price tag. And what a price tag it is. At about 300,000, it's nearly 100,000 pounds more than a 599 GTB. It weighs about 100 kilograms less, it has about 50 odd horsepower more, but the chassis is very trick and we probably need to go through the full tech details now to have an idea of what it is we're actually trying to talk about here. We'll start with that engine, 661 horsepower, 457 foot-pounds of torque. Compression is up from 11.2 to 11.9 and the limit is now set to 8.4. There's a new intake system and a superformed exhaust with a 6 into one manifold. The tappets, cam lobes and piston skirts are redesigned and there's 12% less friction. As for the chassis, well the main aim of the changes was to reduce understeer. So the front tyres are now 285 sections up from 245 and the rears up a notch to 315. The car uses a new Michelin called the Pilot Supersport and that has a full 7.5mm tread depth a near cup style performance. The brakes are second generation CCM, that's carbon ceramics, and for the first time they use a carbon pad as well, which could be interesting. The bodywork mods save 31 kilograms alone. A new splitter and double diffuser give roughly double the downforce of the GTB with a little more drag thrown in, but that doesn't really matter because the GTO will still saunter past 200 miles an hour. Ferrari claims 0 to 62 miles an hour in 3.35 seconds, 0 to 125 in 9.8. In other words, it's fast enough to make your eyes hurt. The cabin is mostly stripped out 599. There's a new centre console layout, there's carbon everything and a pair of new Sabelt carbon seats that save 17 kilograms. But it's still a 599 at heart so there's a radio and plenty of space. Fiorano, I expected this car to be absolutely sensational, and it was. Uh, this new front axle layout with a much wider front tyre does mean it understeers less. It's quite a leery thing, but crikey, it's fast, really, really fast. Feels like you have to work harder to get the performance from it than you do in, say, a Scuderia or 458. I think Ferrari just makes its mid-engine cars easier to drive. Um, on the road, though, this car throws up some surprises. First of all, it's a lovely road car, a really, really pleasant road car. Leave it in sport mode, as I do, not in race, and uh, the exhaust is a bit quieter, and you can use it just like you would use a 599 GTB. I didn't expect that. I thought this was some tear-ass, lightweight nuttermobile that you wouldn't want to use on the road. It's actually a really nice road car. Other stuff worthy of note? Well, 
I don't know whether it's got a different air conditioning compressor, but you might see from the liquid coming from my forehead that it is actually quite hot in here, and I've got the aircon on flat out the whole time just to keep the cabin at sort of a, a, a bearable temperature. It's very comfortable. It doesn't seem too noisy. In fact, I've watched other videos that have been done on this car, very good ones, I have to say, and uh, you know what? I'm not sure if this is as noisy as the cars they were driving. I don't know where the noise is coming from. It's not that noisy from the outside. They talk about it being eight decibels louder in here than in the 599 GTB. It's about right. It doesn't feel an awful lot more compromised. OK, what I'm coming to here is this. It's the conclusion I had at Fiorano during those early laps this morning when I first jumped in the car and never driven it before. I think this is the car the 599 should have been all along because I think it finally has a chassis. It has the surroundings to actually accommodate that completely bombastic engine. We finally have a home for it. Are there any grumbles? Well, after the latest DSG, double clutch, whatever you want to call them, gearboxes, this old F1 does feel a bit lumpy at times. It's very, very quick. 60 milliseconds per shift now. I don't know what 60 milliseconds is, but it's very quick. Uh, an HGT E-Pack 599 does it in 80 seconds, and a normal 599 apparently does its fastest shifts in 100 milliseconds. Um, I suppose it's just the different levels of back pain during each gear shift. This does sort of shamper the edges off nicely. They are getting as good as they're going to get these gearboxes, but it still feels a little bit crude at times. I know it's light, so it's a good solution for this car. Um, brakes, the brakes have phenomenal power, but because they're fully uh, composite now, well, it's a carbon ceramic disc, but there's actually a carbon element in the pad now. They grumble a lot, they make quite a lot of noise, and now and again you can get that sort of frictiony feeling, that gravelly coming back through the pedal, which isn't that pleasant. And sometimes, if they're quite hot, if you're then tootling afterwards, braking from 15 miles an hour to 10 can be a little bit of a guessing game. Um, other things, well, I'm struggling really. It's, it's a great car, it's another great Ferrari. They're just on fire at the moment, aren't they? They're just on fire. I'd like to make a special mention to the noise as well. I've criticised some of the most recent Ferraris, Scuderia, normal 430 and 458, for being a little bit synthetic to me. I think, they, I think the noise comes as much from the, uh, the synthesizer, the laboratory, as it does from the mechanical noises, from bits of metal whacking against each other at speed. But this car just sounds organic to me. It just sounds the way a V12 should. There's a little bit of fruitiness in the exhaust when the valves are open that's a bit silly, but actually the induction noise that's coming through the bulkhead from the, in, from the engine is just lovely. It's really, really lovely. It's again how I'd hoped the 599 would sound. And I tell you what, I'd love to meet the owner of one of these things that's going to go to the ring or to spa or somewhere really quick to rinse it, because I'm sure it's going to be sensational, but you've got to be mighty, mighty good, and you've got to be mighty, mighty rich.